If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 1. I'll pick up verses 18 and 19. If you don't have a Bible with you, it should be on the screen. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. I'd like to read it to you today out of the Passion Translation. So Paul speaking. So Timothy, my son, I am trusting you with this responsibility. Notice that. In keeping with the very first prophecies, notice that, that were spoken over your life and are now in the process. Notice the word process, the process of fulfillment in this great work of ministry in keeping with the prophecy spoken over you. With this encouragement, notice that, use your prophecies as weapons. Notice the word weapons as you wage spiritual warfare by faith and with a clean conscience. I want you to notice three words there at this point, the word prophecies, process, and weapons. I want you to see in these two scriptures, the three steps to the fulfillment of a prophetic word. The three steps to the fulfillment of a prophetic word. The word prophecies, a word of your future potential that is released over your life. Now listen to me, the word of the potential of your future that's released over your life. We understand that God can give you a personal prophecy through an individual. We also know that God's word is a prophetic book and it is filled with prophetic words for you and your family. And you have to lay hold to that and have to claim that and declare that over your family. But understand that there is the spirit of prophecy at work in the church today. And there is a personal prophecy for you and for your family, and you need to lay hold to that. It speaks of the potential of your future, and you need to remember that. Number two, it used the word process. This is the journey, the journey to fulfillment. There's a process that you have to go through to reach that place of fulfillment. And then number three, he spoke of power, the weapons that you do warfare with, the power of the prophetic arsenal that God is making available to you. When God gives you a personal prophecy, either through his word or through a person, you need to know that he's trying to equip you with weapons that you can fight with. So know that a mature prophetic culture as this house, a a mature prophetic culture recognizes the prophetic word, embraces the prophetic process, and wars with the prophetic power. I could stop preaching now, and I've given you my message. But we're going to dig into this a little deeper. And so I want you to grab this this morning. I want you to go with me. We're going to title this Three Steps to Your Prophetic Fulfillment. Father, bless the reading of your word today. Bless your people. Give us insight into this scripture. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me talk to you for just a minute about the prophetic promise. Romans 12. God, God's marvelous grace imparts to each one of us varying gifts and ministries that are uniquely ours. So if God has given you the grace gift of prophecy, okay, it's by his grace that you prophesy. You must activate your gift by using the proportion of faith that you have to prophesy at the level that you are, okay? There is a grace that's available. I've said it to you many times. With the calling of God comes a grace to endure the call. There is is a grace of God that will enable you to do what God has called you to do. So look at this, the prophetic operation and its calling. Look at this. Number one, there is the spirit of prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14, I said, pursue love, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Everyone look at pastor. Everyone looking online. Listen, you should desire to prophesy. You should desire to have the right word at the right moment for the right person. It doesn't mean that you're going to get a glassy look. It doesn't mean that you're going to kind of space out and you're going to start talking in King James Version and it's going to be, thus saith the Lord. It doesn't always mean that. 
sometimes you're in Starbucks sitting down with somebody and you just look at them. You say, you know, I really sense that the Lord wants me to tell you. And you release a word over their life. It may be, you know what? I really sense the Lord wants me to give you this scripture that's found in the book of Romans chapter and verse. You have to understand that God wants to use you to bring a word of encouragement to people in the church, in your home, on the job, in the marketplace, wherever you may be. God wants to use you to speak a word to his people. The spirit of prophecy is here. There is it. Look, everyone can prophesy. Everyone say, that's me. Everyone can prophesy, but not everyone has a gift of prophecy. Now you need to grab that. Everyone can come under the spirit of prophecy, but that doesn't mean that everyone has the gift of prophecy. There are people that have the gift of prophecy, but every person that will yield themselves to Holy Spirit, every person that's learned to walk in the spirit and be filled with the spirit can prophesy at any given moment. It depends on how God wants to use you. It talks about the grace gift of prophecy. It talks about the proportion of faith that you have at the level you are in your walk with the Lord. There are people that have the gift of prophecy, but that doesn't mean that you can't prophesy. It doesn't disqualify you because you say, I don't have the gift of prophecy. There are certain gifts that I don't have, but yet God from time to time may use me. First Corinthians 14, but when someone prophesies, he speaks to encourage people, build them up and bring them comfort. So when the spirit of prophecy comes into the room, we should fully expect that people are going to be encouraged, they're going to be edified, and they're going to be comforted. That's why I say you may be in a hospital room and you may say, Pastor, I don't have the gift of prophecy. That's okay. But the spirit of prophecy can come over you and you can bring a word of comfort to somebody. You can help that person as they're going through a, a hospital stay or a funeral on the job. I'm just saying that because I want everyone in the room and everyone watching online, as you walk with Holy Spirit, he wants to use you. And it's not only for people that would be acknowledged within the church as having the gift of prophecy. That spirit of prophecy can come over you and God can use you at any given moment. The spirit of prophecy will call men out of their historical facts and into their prophetic, uh, their prophetic promises. And that's what I want you to see. That a spirit of prophecy that is used to encourage, to edify, and to comfort, he will use you to pull people out of their historical facts and to pull them into their prophetic promise. God's got a call on their life, and you need to help them to see that call. You need to call people out of addictions. You need to call people out of torment. You need to call people out of darkness. You say, well, pastor, I don't have, the, the, I don't have the, the gift of prophecy. I'm not a prophet. That's okay. The spirit of prophecy still wants to use you to speak a word of encouragement, edification, and comfort to people. We've got this spooky wooky ideal about gifts, and the church needs to shake that off and realize if you're born again and spirit-filled, God wants to use you. We're talking about the prophetic promise. There is the spirit of prophecy. Number two, there is the gift of prophecy. First Corinthians chapter 12, there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit for to one is given prophecy. To one is given prophecy. Many may have the gift of prophecy, but not all are called to be prophets. Now there's another thing I want you to hear. Everyone can come underneath the spirit of prophecy and God can use them to bring a word of encouragement, edification, or comfort. Okay? Everyone. But there's another level, and that is the gift of prophecy. He said to one, he's given the gift of prophecy. That person has a gift that they can tap into very, on a regular basis, very consistent. But just because you have the gift of prophecy doesn't mean that necessarily you're called to the office of a prophet. And you need to understand that. You need to be careful when you, when you begin to try to promote yourself as a prophet. You gotta be careful and time will not permit me to go into that deeper. But you need to understand that not everybody is called to be a prophet. But you may have the gift of prophecy. 
Now, operating in the gift of prophecy, it means that you first learn to function under the spirit of prophecy. You practiced and, and, and you, you had personal growth in your gifting. Now, I use the word practice because we have to understand that in the kingdom of God, there's room for failure. That when you begin to step into your gifting, you're not always going to do that perfect. There may be times when you make mistakes and mistakes will be made, but you need to minimize it. You need to learn from it and then move on. And you can't let a mistake to disqualify you from your gifting. You need to understand that as people begin to operate in the gifts, that there's a period of time where they're learning and they're growing. So we're going to use that word practice. You've got to practice. You've got to learn how to be used by that gifting. And you need to have personal growth in that gifting. Operating under the gift of prophecy. It should be recognized by your leaders and you should be submissive to their oversight. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You come into this house and you have a gift, whatever that gift is, it should be recognized by leaders and then you, you should submit the operation of that gift to their oversight. Listen, one of the greatest things in being used by Holy Spirit is learning how to come under authority. You have to learn how to come under authority so God can entrust you with authority so that you can operate in your gifting. I wouldn't give you two cents for anybody. I don't care if they're an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher. I don't care what they do. If they don't come under authority, I ain't got no time for that. I have no use for a spirit of rebellion. I ain't got no use for it. And you need to be real careful with people that claim they have, a, they have mantles and callings and anointings and they have not submitted their life to a leader or leaders, they're not under authority. Listen, I don't care if you got a business card. I don't care if you got something hanging on your wall. I don't care if you got special shoes and whatever. I don't care what you got. I don't care if you got an alligator uh, briefcase. If you don't know how to submit to authority, I got a problem. I got a problem with that. They want to flash around these cards. And I said, well, that's great. But I always want to ask the question, where's your home church and who's your pastor? And when they say, I don't have one, it's like, Rick, I'm backing up. You don't have a pastor. You don't have someone that can call you on the carpet and can dress you down and hold you accountable. The Bible says, let one prophesy and the others judge. You say, well, I, I don't have a leader. Well, that tells me you got an independent spirit and you scare me and you're not coming in my pulpit. You can go somewhere else and sell your hardware. Listen, you need to, you need to have a pastor. You need to have somebody that can tell you, here's a revelation. No, don't do that. Don't, I'm 60 years old and my pastor still tells me, Randy, I wouldn't do that. Smile at me. Recognized by leaders and submissive to their oversight, operating under the gift of prophecy. There should be a willingness to have your words tested. If you're not, if you don't, if you can't be challenged, then you need to sit down and be quiet. Your words have to be tested. The word gifts here in Corinthians says favor of divine grace. Listen, you're qualified because you're favored with God's grace to operate in this gifting. Now we're talking about the prophetic promise or the prophetic word. First of all, there is a spirit of prophecy that can come on anyone at any time. But there's a second level and it's called the gift of prophecy. Now, that person that has a gift of prof prophecy has learned how to come under the spirit of prophecy. And they have practiced and they've had a personal growth in their gifting. They've been recognized by leaders and they've been submissive to their oversight. And they've had their words tested and they're willing to be tested. 
And there is the favor of divine grace on them. And I say that because everyone that's in this room or watching online, if you really believe that you have the gift of prophecy and it's been recognized by leadership and you've been submissive to their oversight, you need to step into that gifting with full authority and know that you're qualified because you're favored with God's grace to operate in that gifting. I need timidity insecurity to come off of this church listen i can't we can't go where we need to go with the, without the body functioning in its giftings that's why paul said we're lively stones we've all been cut and shaped to slide into that wall building up a holy temple whereby we're filled with the spirit of god you slide into your place and it's a principle that we teach here, the right person and the right place at the right time equals power. It's success. We need you and we need your gifting. I need you to step into a full authority. I need God to use you. I need God to use you because we need everything that God's given you. We need it. We need you. You say, well, I don't feel qualified. You're qualified because of God's favor, his divine grace that's on your life. So we're talking about the prophetic word, the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy. And then thirdly, let's talk about the office of prophet for just a moment. First Corinthians 12, 28 said, and God has appointed these in the church First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administration, a variety of tongues. Many individuals have moved, or excuse me, many individuals move in the prophetic, okay? Either under the spirit of prophecy or with the gift of prophecy, but not all are called to function in the office of a prophet. Three levels. The spirit of prophecy that can come on anyone at any time, the gift of prophecy that God gives, and then the office of a prophet that you're appointed to. You don't get to decide if you're a prophet. You don't get to make that decision. Listen, for years now, for years, for years, I've had men look at me incredible men that I have a lot of confidence, confidence in look at me and say, you're an apostle. I've had many men say there's an apostolic anointing on your life before I ever knew I'd go into government. I've had many men look at me and say, there's an apostolic spirit about you. I've told you before people come up to me and say, God told me to give you this. And it's either a sword, a knife or a gun. I get it. It's a warrior anointing. I get that. It's an apostolic thing. I get that. But you've never heard me introduce myself as an apostle. Other men decide those things. Are you hearing me? Other men get to rise up, men of God, and say, he or she, that's a prophet. He or she, that's an apostle, pastor, teacher, evangelist. They decide that stuff. God uses men to acknowledge what God has already appointed you to. Men get up under the spirit of prophecy, word of knowledge, and they acknowledge, they acknowledge what's on your life. Just because you go print a car, don't make it true. You can go to Houston right now, and for whatever it is, you can go through an eight hour course and come out with a certificate that says you're an apostle. That's not going to make you an apostle. You can go to a conference. You can buy all the books you want, get all the CDs. Do they sell CDs anymore? I don't know. Maybe thumb drives. You get all, you, all, buy all the stuff you want to buy and go home. And that's not going to make you something other than it's good information that you need. But it doesn't make you. It doesn't appoint you into the fivefold ministry. Are you with me? You can prophesy. You may have a gift of prophecy, but that doesn't mean that you hold the office of a prophet. God appoints you. And I'm old school. I think it should be recognized by other men and women of God and more than one that look at you and say, we recognize the mantle and the anointing 
that's on your life. The progression of a prophetic ministry. A, it begins by a calling and operating under the spirit of prophecy. B, there's a maturity and a training that comes in the gift of prophecy. And then C, you're commissioned to the office of a prophet. Always remember the principle found in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 20. It's called the bucket of stones. God said to Israel, if a man or a woman prophesies in my name, and it's a false prophecy, it doesn't come to pass, they're misrepresenting me, and they're taking the name of the Lord God in vain. That's not just cussing when it says, do not take the name of the Lord in, uh, in vain. But when you get up and you say, thus saith the Lord, and I didn't tell you to say that, and it proves false, he said they're to be stoned. Now, we're no longer under the law, okay? I get that. We're in the dispensation of grace. But the principle still stands the same. When you get up and you say, thus saith the Lord, you need to be careful. God takes that very serious. That's why there are times when you will hear me say, guys, listen, I really sense that Holy Spirit is telling me something. Or I feel Holy Spirit's prodding me. Or I really feel that the Holy Spirit's leading me. I, there are times when I'm very careful. Every so often I'll do like this and go, everybody look at me. Look at me. Listen to me. This is the word of the Lord. This is what God's saying. Thus saith the Lord. And when I do that, understand, I take that very seriously. And I remember this principle that I'm talking about out of Deuteronomy. I'm very careful with that. Very careful with that. When I'm in a service and somebody says, listen, I really feel like Holy Spirit speaking. I think that's great. But when he says, look, listen, thus saith the Lord. I go, I, okay, you got my full attention now. You got my full attention now. I know that men are going to make mistakes. I do that. I, I know that. But listen, we have to be real careful when we start saying, thus saith the Lord. I'm old school. I think you need to be careful. I think you got to be careful and not misrepresent him. I think you got to be real careful when you stand up and say, I'm telling you what God said. Listen, when somebody tells me that God walked in their room, not an angel, God walked in their room and God said to them this, and, and especially if they put a place on it, a date on it, a time on it. I mean, they're saying this, and, and then they, I've heard it before. They ended up with saying, and man can't do anything to stop it. I'm going, that, phew, that's a word from the Lord. And that doesn't come to pass. I got a problem. And I back up. I back up because you said, God said it, no, and there's nothing man can do to stop it. And this is the word of the Lord. That, that weighs heavy upon me. And I just want you to understand what it means to be a prophet. What it, you need to understand that you're appointed to that position. It isn't just because you want a title and you want, you want recognition and you want to be up in front of people. Listen, you need to understand the price that comes. If you study the scriptures, you'll find that most apostles and most prophets were, were, were martyred. The price they paid to be there. Listen, you, when I've told you before, when somebody says to me, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm an apostle or a prophet, I want to look at them immediately and say, well, listen, I'm so sorry. And I'm going to pray for you. And God love you. And I just pray God's protection over your life. Because if you read church history and you read the scriptures, you'll find most men and women that were called into an apostolic ministry or that prophetic office, it costs them. There's a price you pay for that. To whom much is given, much is required. You have to understand that. There's a price you pay. Look at what God did with Moses. Look how God gave himself to Moses. He, he gave himself to Moses in an unprecedented way. He spoke to Moses face to face. That's why when Moses struck that rock and he misrepresented God, it cost him moving into the promised land. It cost him because much was given to him and much was required. He made that mistake. But you have to understand, you've got to understand how God gave himself to Moses. And he expected more from him. He held him to a higher standard. And so when you say, well, I'm an apostle or I'm a prophet, 
God's given a lot to you. And there's, he holds you. He holds you accountable for that. So just be easy with that. Don't just run out to Kinko's and get you a card printed up too fast. You really need to pray about this. You really need to make sure that you want to pay this price. That you really want to step into the five-fold ministry and take this on. you got to be careful with that because it will cost you. Everybody say amen. Mm. 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 Hold on. I tell you what, I understand there's children in the room and I'm going to be sensitive to that. But I've got like five minutes left on the clock. I'm going to go into the second point, at, but I won't finish it. We'll have to come back next time, okay? But I, 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 let me go just a little deeper. Can you do that? Everybody say amen. amen. So we understand the prophetic word, the prophetic promise, the spirit of prophecy, and everyone, everyone can prophesy at any given moment. The spirit of prophecy can come over you. And the Lord can use you to bring a word of, of encouragement, edification, or comfort. But there's another level. Stephen, come help me. I'm not going to be able to get in the next point. But you can go into another level where there's a gift of prophecy. And, and remember, guys, for those of you that have the gift of prophecy, that, that word gifting, it talks about the favor of God that brings a divine grace on you. And he, if God has chosen you and he, give, he gave that gift, he gave it, not man, God gave that, then you need to get plugged into a local church. Let it be recognized by the leaders. Come be submissive to their oversight and let your words be challenged. Let your words be tested. It's okay. And you need to step into that gifting with full authority. And you need to let God use you. Listen. I understand. I really do. I get it. We're living in a time when the manifestations of Holy Spirit are not as popular as they once were because they scare people. And so we have a tendency to keep a lid on that. Okay? We, we have a tendency to, to want to hold that down. But listen, we need the manifestations of Holy Spirit now more than ever more than ever and again it doesn't have to be some weird thing that you do it doesn't have, you know I grew up in a time and I'm not being critical it is all we knew but I remember as a teenager picking up on it pretty fast that every time there was a, a, a prophecy or a word of knowledge or interpretation of tongues I always thought it was funny it was in King James Version and I thought, well, I guess, does that mean God only speaks in King James Version? It was always thus and thou and thee and, and uh, you know, and I, I just, I never was completely comfortable with that. And I, I just, that's okay. That's all we knew. But I grew, I, I felt, I felt it was okay for me to look at somebody and say, look at me, listen, and not talking to King James and say, you know what? The Lord wants me to tell you, the Lord wants me to tell you that he loves you. And what you're going through right now will not destroy you. You're going to be okay. You're going to come through this. That's just, and, I, and that's the way I operate now. And like I said, there are times when I'll say, thus saith the Lord. This is the word of the Lord, but I'm real careful with that. And, when I, and there have been times that I've been in the altar and I'll be praying with people and I'll get up in their ear and I'll start, I'll start releasing a word over them and it don't make any sense to me. It just it don't make no sense to me. And I'll get done and I'll look at them and there'll be tears just running down their faces. It, it, I, it, didn't make the, it didn't make a lick of sense to me, but they understood it. And it was something unique to them. And it touched their life. Listen to me. People desperately need the spirit of prophecy right now. Rather, it's a word of knowledge, a personal prophecy. People right now are craving to hear the word of the Lord, to hear that God knows them and knows where they're at and what they're going through. Are you with me? 
They're longing for a prophetic word. Remember, we're talking about the three steps to prophetic fulfillment. And the first one is the spirit of uh, the, the, uh, the prophetic word or prophetic uh, promise. People need the word of the Lord. Rather, it comes through the spirit of prophecy or the gift of prophecy through you. They need the word of the Lord. Don't stifle that gifting. Don't shove it down. But release that word and let God use you in the marketplace, on the job, in the church. Let God use you. And then third, again, we need the prophets. We need the prophets. And we're going to bring prophets in. We brought them in the past and we're going to bring them in the future. But I'm going to bring people in that I think are credible. People I think uh, are recognized as prophets that can stand in this congregation and release a word over this house. And as your pastor, I want you to know that I seek advice. I do. You know, I do. I, you know, it wasn't long ago I called uh, Denny Kramer. Y'all remember Dennis, you know, and, and I called him up and I said, hey, I got some questions about the prophetic. And we talked about it. And he, he shared his heart with me. And I seek out men and men of God that I trust, men and women of God that I know that are recognized as prophets. And, and we will bring on, we'll bring prophets in again. We've got some coming. So, but I just, I just want you to understand that I, I honor the office of the prophet and I value that so much. But I just, I get concerned when people take it so lightly and they just want to step in there with these titles. And you need to be careful with that. But I want this house to have a progression of maturing where the spirit of prophecy works and the gift of prophecy is given and then the office of the prophet is appointed. I want there to be uh, apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers that are raised up out of this house and that go forth from this house. I want that. And I don't want people in this house to be afraid and say, well, I'm afraid to be used because pastor may correct me. You can't look at it that way. You have to look at this. Listen to me, and I'm gonna quit. You gotta listen to me. This is the safest place for you in Beaumont, Texas. And you need to know that we are mature people, and this is a mature culture, and it's a place where your gifting can grow, be nurtured, and be developed, and be matured to where God uses you. You need to know that. But if I'm gonna let you use your gifting, then you gotta trust me when I tell you no. Are you with me? If I'm gonna let you teach a class, and you get up and teach, and you get into a little heresy, or your theology gets kind of Cattywampus, that's Greek. Cattywampus. Your, your message gets a little cattywampus. You got to let me pull you under my authority and say, listen, I, let, me, let me straighten this out a little bit with you. And you can't get offended. Oh, Jesus. Give us men and women that can't get offended. Listen, how many believes that you died with Christ and you were resurrected to walk in a new life. Well, then you can't be offended because a dead man can't be offended. You go to the graveyard right now and scream and holler and cuss at them all you want to. Ain't one of them gonna get up and be mad or offended. But when we get offended, it tells me we're not quite as dead as we thought we were. You gotta, be, you gotta come under oversight and you gotta be okay with it. And say, you know what, pastor loves me. And he's actually trying to help me. If I'm teaching wrong, if I'm using the wrong, the, my gifting in the, at the wrong manner, if there's something at cattywampus, he's gonna help me straighten that out so that I can fly right and do what God's called me to do. So this is the safest place for you to use and to mature your gifting. So don't be afraid. I want you to come in here and say, wow, in this house, there's room for failure. There's room for failure. 
I can learn. I can, I can learn. Ain't that good? I, the other day I was at my grandson's, one of his games, their first two games, they lost their first two games because they were having a problem hiking the ball. If you can't get the ball to the quarterback, you're not gonna win. And so I heard the coach tell those kids, listen guys, because they got beat pretty good the second time. He said, listen to me, there's only two things that happen here. Either you learn or you win. He didn't say they lost, he just said that's a learning moment. And so the third game, they put my grandson in as the center. They ain't lost since, and now they're in the playoffs. I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying. They've won every game. And, and the last two games, they scored over 30 points in each game. I'm just saying, but I'm just saying. You either learn or you win. And so you gotta, you gotta see that in this house. There's no losing. You're either learning or you're winning. Is that okay? So we're talking about three steps to prophetic fulfillment. And this house is the spirit of prophecy. At any moment, anybody can be used by God. In this house, there are people though that have the gift of prophecy. And God uses them on a regular, consistent basis. And then there is the office of a prophet where you're, you're commissioned to. And that's reserved for fewer than what you think but that's okay and that's how we start this journey to prophetic fulfillment and I want you to let God use you because we need your gifting so desperately in these days